Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. Welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series set. All right, today we're going to be talking about section 11.2, which talks about series. Now in this section, we're going to do, have four main learning goals. We want to define and be able to represent series. We want to determine when series converge, right, when they have a finite sum. We want to talk about a specific type of series, the geometric series, and determine when these specific series converge. And lastly, we're going to explore some applications of geometric series. All right, in this first video, we're going to focus on that first goal of defining and represent series. All right, let's take a look. All right, so what is a series? Well, let's start by reviewing what a sequence is. A sequence is an ordered infinite list of numbers. So as an example, I have 1, 1 fourth, 1 ninth, 1 sixteenth, 1 25th, and so on and so forth. That's an example of a sequence. And I could use the notation here with my curly brackets and then define my sequence as a sub n. And that's one way I could define my sequence. And I have another way I can represent that if I just write a sub n equals. And now I write the equation for the general term. And so how do I get that general term? Well, I can kind of look at each one of these uh, elements of my sequence. And I'm kind of pairing it up with a different index. So in other words, my n value in my general expression is going from n equals 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 possibly. And I want to match each value here with its index value. And so what I can see is that, well, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. And so it looks like the denominator of my sequence values is my index squared. So that kind of guides me to the equation for my sequence, which is 1 over n squared. All right, what does that do with series? Well, a sequence is an ordered infinite list of numbers. A series is the sum of a list of numbers. So if I start with this sequence, I can generate the associated series that looks like 1 plus 1 fourth, plus 1 ninth, plus 1 sixteenth, plus 1 twenty fifth, plus so on and so forth. And just like I had uh, different ways I could represent my sequence, I have different ways I can represent my series. So I can write this using my equation, and now using the sigma notation, which basically says add up all of the expression 1 over n squared for n values to go from 1 to infinity. And so that's how I can represent this series. Now just to reinforce what the sigma notation is doing, let me generate another series, i equals 2, 2, 4 of 2i. And if I wrote this back out into an expanded form, so I have sigma notation and I have expanded form here, to write this series in expanded notation, I just evaluate this argument at i equals 2, i equals 3, i equals 4, and then I stop at i equals 4. So I'd have 2 times 2, 2 times 3, plus 2 times 4. So I have two important characteristics or two important types of series here. We can see that the second type here is a finite series. I only have three terms. The first one was an infinite series. So I have infinitely many terms. Also, I have two different types of ways I can represent this. I have sigma notation and I have expanded form over here. And one of the first skills we need to develop when working with series is to be able to go back and forth easily from sigma notation to expanded form. So let's take a look at a couple problems that will focus on that. All right, so here we have some problems. The first two are going from sigma notation to expanded form. That part's relatively straightforward. All I do is evaluate that argument at the different i values. So when i equals 1, for instance, I get 1 squared plus 1. And then I get 2 squared plus 1, 3 squared plus 1, 4 squared plus 1, and 5 squared plus 1. And that would be it. So I have this finite series here. Uh, the next one I have, well, let's see. When i equals 1, I have 3 over 3. And then I have 3 over 4, 3 over 5, so on and so forth, dot, 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 because it's an infinite series. So that's relatively straightforward. Now the next two problems are going from expanded form into this sigma notation. That can be a little bit tricky. Once again, I'm maybe trying to look at the sum from, and I can choose to start at other values, but I'm going to start at i equals 1 and go to infinity. And now basically I'm trying to pair up the piece that's changing in my series with the index. And so when I'm thinking about 1, 2, 3, and 4, maybe I recall that 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So I can see the denominators here are the index squared plus 1. And so now I can write my series as 1 over i squared plus 1. And so I've gone from expanded form to sigma notation. 
And really, this is just a matter of experience and kind of trying different things that, that work. I'll look at the next one. This looks like it may be a more complicated series here. How would I write this one? Well, in this case, I might want to actually write these decimals um, as fractions. I can say that this is 3 plus, well, the next one is 3 tenths, and then I have 3 hundredths, 3 thousandths, 3 ten thousandths, so on and so forth. So now, once again, I'm trying to kind of pair up uh, some index numbers with how these things are changing. And it looks like in the denominator here I have powers of 10. So I'm thinking now that maybe I want 3 over 10 raised to some power. That seems like it should work. But i got to be careful here, because if I start at 1 and go to infinity, well, when i equals 1, my first term would be 3 over 10. And so actually, in this case, I might want to start my index at 0, because 10 raised to the 0 power is 1. And so this looks like it would work. Now, the other way I could make that adjustment, if I really did want to start at 1, which I certainly could do, as well, then I'd want that first i value to give me 10 raised to the 0 power. So I would just change my index to i minus 1. And so both of these are perfectly valid representations for this series. OK, so now we've learned how to represent our series in expanded form and using sigma notation. But the bottom line is a series is a big sum of numbers. And for an infinite series, we're adding up infinitely many numbers. So one question right away is, can we actually do that? If we can add up the infinitely many numbers and get some sort of finite answer, we're going to say our series converges. And the convergence of series is actually the main focus of the next video. So that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.